Hey, I'm Tejas Kumar, and I've been building on the web for over 20 years at places like Marcel, Spotify, Zeta, and more. Today, I'm a developer relations engineer for generative AI at Datastax. But I'm not here to talk about any of that. Today, I want to talk to you specifically about React server components with AI. And look, I, I don't want to take too much time, so let's just get straight into the demo. Here's what we have. So I love Netflix. I use Netflix a lot, but oftentimes when I search for things, I search in natural language, like movies with a strong female lead, something like this, you know, and usually it doesn't match. And that's a real problem with the internet today is like, we think in natural language, but if, if I want to watch just a movie with superheroes, I can't type this without getting just a non-answer. This is changing with AI and React server components. And the way it's changing is through vector embeddings. Now, um, we need to spend a little bit of time talking about them because they're really powerful. There's vec vector embeddings are generated by very specialized machine learning models that take in natural language and output a big list of numbers. Um, how they can do this is because these numbers are comparable in space. What does that mean? If we think about a vector, a three-dimensional vector, that's just space, right? There's um, horizontal, vertical, and depth. That's 3D space, three-dimensional space, which is represented by a three-dimensional vector. Now, if I say words like dog and cat and pet are all over here, and words like um, airplane and aluminum are sort of over here, and words like react and angular and solid are all over here, you see it's moving around space and we're putting things in different places. That's what an embeddings model does. It literally just embeds vector representations of natural language in space. When you have those, you can then compare the space um, given by the vector of a user's query to the space of a thing, like a movie name, and find things that are closer. Literally, this is how vector search works. And this is a huge part of generative AI. So together, what we're going to do is build a better search experience using React server components. The way we're going to do that is um, by querying this database. You need to have your vectors live somewhere. At Datastax, we make a vector database called Astra. And we loaded a bunch of movies here into this database. And you can see their vector representations if you look at this field here. So I'm just going to copy that. And I'm going to paste it. This is the vector representation for one of the movies. It's kind of nuts. It's just like this huge array of just coordinates, right? And so we're going to query this and build some things. What we're going to build is a movie app called Movies Plus Plus. It looks like this. And what I want is to search for movies with superheroes and have it do stuff. But it doesn't exist now. We're going to code this together in real time. So to do that, let's just open our editor. And this is a Next.js app. You can see that by the app directory. And every Next.js app starts with pretty much a layout. So this is our layout. It's just HTML body children. Inside the layout, we've got a page. That's our home page. If we go split screen, what we can see is we have the header, um, the logo, and the search form. And in the search form, we have a text input and some suggestions. And this is all live, meaning if I change this, this whole suggestion to like, um, hi, um, it'll just update, you see, it says hi. And so um, this is all live. And what we're going to do is make this AI enabled, OK? We're going to do that using the Vercel AI SDK. So how do we do that? Well, let's make a new file, first of all, called ai.tsx. This is a server-only component. And it's very important that we add use server at the top. Now we can export const AI. And this will create a context for us. And in the context, we have some actions. We'll talk about what those are. They're literally what they sound like. And we have um, AI state and UI state. So initial AI state, initial UI state. And these are just arrays of conversations. And the conversations look like, um, you know, they look like there's a role, which is, you know, user or assistant. And there's the content, which is the prompt, okay? That this is literally what, that, it's just an array of that. Okay, cool. So now that we have this, um, we're going to go to our layout, so our outermost level, and wrap everything in this AI context. We're just going to auto import it just there, okay? Sorted. Now, it, we need to make these suggestions do something. So the suggestion for, you know, movies with a strong female lead, when you click it, we need to do something. So on click, it calls search from use movie search. Okay, what is search? Search is a function that comes from use movie search and it does nothing. So we need to make this do something. Okay, what do we want to make it do? Well, we want to make it continue the conversation. So for that, we'll create an action called continue conversation. And it's an async function that gets a prompt and we'll see what happens. We'll just say prompt is a string. This is TypeScript. Okay, so now we need a response, which is the return from a function called stream UI from the Vercel AI SDK. Stream UI requires a model, so we'll get OpenAI from Vercel's wrapper. 
um, I think it's a named export from AI SDK slash OpenAI. And we'll call this and use GPT 4.0. Um, the auto completion here is very nice. So we'll use 4.0. Great. Next, we need a list of messages. But where do they come from? Well, they come from history. So we'll get history by calling uh, get mutable AI state. Again, it's just an array, right? And messages is history dot get what we have so far. And we'll add the incoming prompt just like that from the user. Next, we need to say what happens like if we get text back. So we'll do this and we'll see what we get. So we get content and we get done. And so if we're done, then we can call history.done to update history. And we'll just wrap it with um, history, the current history, plus the role is assistant, not AI. And we'll get back the content. Finally, we'll return the content. Notice we're returning the content, not just if we're done, but always because this is streamed. Finally, we'll return the role is assistant and the display is response dot value. That's it. This is our continue conversation. We've defined it. Now let's use it. So we'll come back here and uh, sorry, uh, this is our search function. So we'll say const. First of all, we'll um, get the conversation. Let's come here and say, you know, um, equals use AI UI state, excuse me. So we'll use UI state and we, we just need to set conversation. This is a getter setter. So we get the conversation array and then we can set it. Okay, great. So now what do we want to do? Well, we want to um, set the conversation to whatever the old conversation, let's just say Matt Pocock, cover your eyes. Um, it's whatever the old conversation was, but now we have a message from the user, right? So we set the conversation there. Next, we get the response from the LLM or from the AI SDK. So we'll say await, continue conversation. We need to get that. Um, let's just const continue conversation, conversation, what? No, is um, use actions. Okay, and we'll continue the conversation. And again, it expects a prompt, so we'll just pass the prompt and, and it's wrapping the prompt here, okay? So we'll do that. And now we get a response, so we need to set the conversation again, this time just with the response. Great, this looks good. Finally, we go back to our page and we're reading the result, but it's from an empty array. Instead of this, we'll read the result from use UI state, because again, we're setting UI state here, right? This is is from this is a setter of use UI state. So we set it and we read it. That's pretty much it. Let's go see what happened. So now we have this and I'll say um, hi, just to test that it works. It doesn't work because hooks can only be called inside the body of a function component. So my hooks need to be one level up. Let's try this again. Hi. Great. It's totally working. How can I assist you today? So now let's try doing our search like this. Great. This is actually working. How do we work? This is great. Totally cool. Okay. Now movies with a strong female lead looks good so far, but you notice it's giving us markdown um, with the double X double asterisks and stuff. So let's go back here and wrap content in Markdown. And these are server components. Look at that, but we need to escape. Let's try this again. Um, let's say movies with a strong female lead. Incredible. And so we have Markdown and it's working, but this is where it gets interesting because if you look here, we're actually returning a server component. We could do better. What that means is we can actually query a database where we have these movies. In fact, we have them in our vector database. So we, if we search our vector database, we don't just get back the name, but we get back all kinds of metadata, like the poster path. And we can use this poster path to render not just text, but maybe better UI. This is called generative UI. And we can do that through the use of tools. So let's create a tool and we'll call it get UI. Uh, sure, why not? And we can define some stuff. We can do parameters or end a description. The description is how the LLM knows how to call this. So we'll say get movies as UI. We can even say um, use this tool when the user asks for UI. Parameters are what the LLM creates to give to our function, which is a tool. So we'll just use Zod to validate this. And we'll say z.object. And what do you want? Well, you want the query. So we'll say query z.string. 
okay? And now this becomes an input argument to our generate function. And this is where we can do whatever we want and return UI. So now we get query, it already knows because of this. Um, in fact, if I do this, it's going to see. It's so cool, it's type safe. So what, what do we want to do here? Well, we want to query our database. So to do that, we'll use the AstraDB TypeScript client. So we'll import data API client from Datastax AstraDB TS, and we'll just instantiate it. So we'll say, um, we can just instantiate it here. We can say const client is new data API client, and we'll do some environment variables, process.env, um, Astra DB application token. I know this exists. And the database is client.db process.env Astra DB API endpoint. Okay, cool. So now we have an access to our database. We have a client for our database. So let's query it. So what we want to do is const movies is, and exactly, this is actually perfect. Um, movies.find title is query. We're not going to do this. Instead, we're going to compare vectors. So we find the first argument is empty, but the second argument will say vector, and we need a vector embedding. Remember, we talked about embeddings. We need to convert the user's query into a vector. How might we do that? Well, we can use OpenAI for this. So we can say vector is await new OpenAI, and we can obviously pass in our API key, and dot um, embeddings dot create, and the input is the query and the model is text embedding three large we're just going to convert the query to an embedding and then we get back the response and we say dot data dot data response dot data dot um, zero dot embedding so we get back the embedding just like that one line okay so we find our movies and then we turn them into an array Great. So now we have our movies. Finally, we just need to return a React component. So we'll return movies, which is a component, and we pass in movies like this. That's it. So let's go back here. And what is this component? It's just a div that maps over movies and returns posters. That's really it. So let's see now how this works. I'm just going to say this is any. Don't tell Matt Pocock. Okay. So when the user asks for UI, so let's go back to our thing and say, show me movies with a, with a strong female lead as UI. And so now it's gonna try and call our tool and we'll see what happens. There we go, look at that, that's incredible. And the cool thing is um, these are interactive. So I can like click on them and I get taken to the actual page. Isn't that cool? But let's maybe do a limit. I don't want so many. So let's just say like limit maybe here limit is four and um, let's try again movies but notice there was some lag so what we could even do is show a spinner so if we turn this into a generator function so if we do something like this um, and add a star now it's a generator meaning I can yield so I can yield here and I can say loading movies actually um, we can say something like generating embeddings Right, and then once I get the embeddings, I can yield here and say asking Astra. And then finally I return movies. This is so cool. I give feedback to the user. Let's try this again. Show me superhero movies as UI. And see, oh, that's so cool. Perfect, look at that. Superhero movies indeed. I can even have these not be strings, but React components. So I can do Tailwind. I can say um, integrations. I have some spinners somewhere. I think, um, let's see, I think I have spinner. Surely, it's an ellipsis spinner and an integration spinner. Awesome. So we could do um, integration spinner. And we can close the div like this. And we can maybe import that. Perfect. And then I'll just replicate the spinner here. And we can really, what I want to show you is we can make truly great UX. Look at that. And we can even do flexbox because it's tailwind items center gap two um and now we can say what what do you want did i make something oh, i added a semicolon okay um this is great so let's try again Mo romantic comedies in the uk 
incredible. And to show you that it's actually client side rendered, I go to my movies component and I can just go to my movie and on the figure, which is just, it's just an image. I can say on click, literally there's a client side event here on click and I can say um, alert hi, right? Um, and I could be like movies with huge monsters. Now I click, look at that client side, incredible. And so um, that's generative UI. And these are all server components. As we saw, um, if we go to the AI function, all of this is happening on the server. That's the power of generative UI. And that's how you can use React server components with AI today. One final thing about this is these components are pre-existing, which is good, because oftentimes a problem with AI is non-determinism. But when you can enforce, hey, render these components that I create, you get way more control from the large language model. Instead of it hallucinating some nonsense, um, you actually can control how it looks. So in summary, we covered a lot of stuff. Uh, we covered vector embeddings, we covered natural language search, and finally generative UI. I'm around on the internet if you want to find me on Tejas Komar underscore, but for now, thank you so much for joining this presentation.